Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. Today I got five key issue 9.8 comics that are ready to explode in value. And uh, that is kind of a big claim, like these ones are going to explode. So uh, we'll get into uh, my reasoning for each one on the video here. Uh, first one up is a Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man number one from 2014. This one feels kind of a, a bit of like a last man standing 9.8 for a Miles Morales key issue. That's still kind of affordable in a 9.8. It just feels like all these sort of obvious Miles Morales keys are so absolutely expensive in a 9.8. Uh, but for this one, you know, it's not going to replace like the Ultimate Comics, um, uh, what is it, Ultimate Comics Spider-Man number one, the uh, origin of Miles Morales and second overall appearance of Miles Morales. That's like the second Miles Morales key that you'd absolutely want. But this one really works as a great affordable one. And you hear from Miles Morales fans like this one is sort of the first uh, solo titled Miles Morales comic. And it's a bit of a play on words, to be honest, because I think that Ultimate Comics number one is the first solo Miles Morales comic book type of thing. But uh, since this one has Miles Morales in the title name, you know, a few collectors have pointed to this one as still being like a, a pretty great uh, Miles Morales key issue that's, you know, still affordable in the 9.8. I happen to agree with them. And right around current prices, I, I still feel like this one could explode like, you know, certainly a few more hundred dollars, um, you know, getting into these Across the Spider-Verse movies in the next few years. Uh, so there's 238 9.8s in the first print for a Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man number one from 2014, 67.6%, .6 the 9.8 ratio. So recent prices on that first printing, you know, you wish maybe the cover was a little bit more eye appealing, but it, it's a decent cover on the first print. $180, $199, and $229, all US dollars. So right around $200 for this one, I feel like it's got the potential to add a few more hundred bucks um, with this one, you know, pretty much being the first Miles Morales solo titled book. Uh, you want to consider the variants for this one. If you're, you know, liking this one a lot, there's two variants to really aim. One is really tough to find that is absolutely kind of coveted by Miles Morales fans. Uh, so the Peterson variant's the first one. This is kind of the uh, a little bit lower priced one. Saw one sell for $499 in a 9.8. So yeah, lower price, but still um, uh, pretty expensive, to be honest, in that uh, Peterson variant. But the other is the variant edition. And that one, a, a really good eye appeal on that one. Really tough to find. I think there's a little bit less than the Peterson variant on the census. I saw one of those sell in a 9.8 for $2,495 on eBay uh, in, in a completed sale on eBay this morning, just doing a little research. So uh, consider those variant editions for Miles Morales Ultimate Spider-Man number one. But in that first print, like right around 200, feeling like a good uh, affordable Miles Morales 9.8 to uh, consider, and I think it's got a chance to uh, explode a couple hundred dollars in value moving forward. Okay, next one, one we've talked about a few times recently, Fantastic Four 243 Classic Galactus cover, John Byrne Galactus cover with uh, Fantastic Four, you know, it looks like they're eventually going to be coming in the MCU. It's going to be really hard to not do Galactus if you bring in Fantastic Four, like it would just make so much sense to do Galactus, especially now with, you know, the big budget Disney films, tons of CGI, like they could just make Galactic look absolutely phenomenal. So uh, Galactus look absolutely phenomenal. I think this has got a huge bright future if that happens. And if not, it's it's still going to be absolutely one to collect and one that has trended up in value over the last um, few years, despite there not being any big Fantastic Four movies. So it's a great one regardless. 184 9.8s in a blue label, a one of 184. 47.8% is the 9.8 ratio. And uh, recent sale for this one, they could sort of sell in that sort of 250 to 300 range in a direct edition. Interesting, I saw a new stand edition for this one looking pretty centered as well on a completed listing though, but it didn't sell. And I think it was like $450, maybe like 425, but it didn't sell. That would be really, you know, if you really like this one, the new stand edition for, you know, 425 is probably the higher end of the range, but sort of around 400, maybe a little under for the new stand. Uh, maybe that one's still on eBay. I only saw that in the completed listing, so I'm not too sure about that one. But in a direct edition, I think 275 is kind of a bang on fair price. Maybe you get it closer to 250. I think this one could could absolutely explode in a sort of a you know MCU Fantastic Four with Galactus. Yeah, this one's probably probably could double to be honest from from where it is now if that happens. And if not, just a great collector item that you can absolutely enjoy if you're a Galactus or a Fantastic Four fan. Yeah, I kind of I really want this one. This is. One I've recommended quite often, just haven't uh, kind of had that, that opportunity to pull the trigger on a really nice one. Okay, next one, Uncanny X-Men 266. Just a big no-brainer X-Men key issue here. First 
full appearance of Gambit. And, uh, you know, you're seeing kind of, I think they're pretty much rumors, but uh, where that Doctor Strange movie could possibly introduce the X-Men uh, into the MCU. So, I mean, hopefully they have Gambit on the X-Men team if they do introduce him, but that is a super rumor. I, I wouldn't really count on that to, to happen, but with Uncanny X-Men 266, just a huge classic key issue that, you know, even if the movie doesn't happen sort of imminently, this is still going to be a great one to hold, but I think it does have that explosion type of potential when um, MCU X-Men uh, sort of uh, get teased and everything like that. 3,069.8s in a blue label, early 90s book, going to be a ton of them in a 9.8. 19.5% is a 9.8 ratio, dipping under 20, that's nice to see on an X-Men 266. It's trending down over time. It used to be like 23, 24% on a X-Men 266, uh, the 9.8 percentage ratio. Uh, recent sales, $950 and $1,075 in a direct edition. Yeah, the newsstand went for, um, I'll check my prices here, uh, $2,247, a recent newsstand edition, if you're really serious about a Uncanny X-Men 266, but 950, 1,075, yeah, like, especially if Gambit gets into the MCU, I see this one at 2,000 bucks, basically, in that kind of environment, and maybe even a little bit more, so it's got some uh, explosion potential, I think. All right, next one's a cool one, a Dark Knight's Metal, number two, in the Mattia Virgin variant, I want to specify for this one. This is a really cool one that's still affordable in the top grade, but uh, I think, you know, arguably this is the first appearance of the Batman Who Laughs. I know Teen Titans 12 is kind of a tough one in the 9.8. Collectors have really went after that one, but uh, Scott Snyder, who wrote this one, says like this is basically the first full appearance of the Batman Who Laughs, and it is like a solid cameo over multiple panels. So um, in the Virgin variant Dark Knight's Metal, this one's still affordable, uh, Dark Knight's Metal number two. I think this is the one to go after out of all the sort of versions of this one. 201, 9.8s in a blue label. 94.4% is the 9.8 ratio, so pretty much all of them are 9.8s in this Virgin variant. Interesting, okay, I've been watching one on eBay for a really long time, about a month or two. It's $140. Shipping to Canada is a little expensive. It's kind of one of those where they have the, the uh, like tariffs sort of added right at the checkout. Uh, so shipping's like 60, like 50 or dollars or something to Canada. Otherwise, you know what, at $140, I think that's a pretty fair value. It's not like a screaming deal, but I, I probably would have bought this one at $140 plus, if it was like $20 shipping instead of $50 shipping to Canada, I would probably would have bought this one already, one that's on eBay right now for $140. Now, if you're in the United States, you can get that $140 price at a, you know, a decent shipping rate. Uh, I think a Dark Knight's Metal 2 and that Mattia Virgin variant it is absolutely one-to-one. -one. 140 is like a fair value, I would say. You wait on this one, there's not a lot of them. I don't see this one too often, see this one pop up on an auction. Maybe you get it like a little under 100, maybe a little over 100, depending on kind of how lucky you get on an auction. But for me, I think this one's a little bit undervalued. It's got like some explosion potential, I would say. And uh, right at around 140 on that, that uh, listing on eBay might be one to consider out there if, if uh, you're a big Batman Who Laughs fan like I am. All right, and the last one here of uh, key issues in the 9.8 that are ready to explode. Amazing Spider-Man 252. Yeah, we did uh, talk about this one on the recent pricing video we did. It sold for $2,000 in the 9.8. That's really kind of getting up there to... Uh, you know, the all-time high prices that were achieved during the virus era highs, I guess you could call it. That was about a year ago. Uh, looking on the census, though, Amazing Spider-Man 252, Amazing Fantasy 15 cover homage, first appearance of the black costume, 1,439 uh, 9.8s in a blue label. Quite a lot of them, but, you know, first black costume is going to be so popular. 9.8% uh, is the 9.8 ratio. So getting into the single digits. This one was always 11 or 10% when I had purchased this one, but... That's still pretty phenomenal for a book of this age. Now it's a single digit or 9.8% of all graded copies are 9.8. The lower the better with a 9.8 ratio. Pretty tough 9.8. And uh, at $2,000, I just feel like, you know, I'm seeing some higher prices for this one and I got a feeling that this could kind of break out to all time highs, you know, anytime, maybe within the next six months, let's call it. Uh, that $2,000 price in the direct edition, this one's a new stand. I got the new stand and the direct in this one, luckily. This is the one I really targeted when I got into collecting, but uh, the Direct had sold for 2000 recently. I think you could still get a little closer to 1500 on the Direct Edition uh, if you're kind of patient in the next little bit. There are quite a few of these. It's a popular book, 
Uh, but you got a long-term time horizon on this. I think this one's you know going to explode at some point. And certainly, like Tom Holland, there hasn't really been a uh, you know Tom Holland black Spidey costume yet uh, movie. So that could absolutely happen. This would do well in that kind of environment. But uh, yeah, quite a few reasons why this one could explode. But you know, it's just I've said in the past, it's one of those ways where you can kind of get a little taste of Amazing Fantasy 15, which is the best comic book to invest in, basically in the modern age in a 9.8. So I think for that, it's just one that's going to slowly but steadily uh, uh, trend up in value. And it's uh, absolutely a no-brainer. I mean, Spider-Man 252 in the direct edition, hopefully closer to 1,500, but that one has sold for 2,000. And uh, a quick bonus pick I want to go through really quick. I've talked about this one kind of off and on quite a bit, so I didn't want to fully cover it, but it's uh, Canon The Last Padawan, number six. I think this one's kind of a hot one that... You could probably get in there right now. One had sold a, a lick under 600 US dollars in a 9.8. This is first appearance of Sabine Wren, or first full appearance of Sabine Wren, Ezra Bridger, and, and the gang. Looks like they're going to be in that Ahsoka show. And uh, a phenomenal cover, I think, on Canon 6. Yeah, the more I just see this one, I love the cover with kind of the reflection in the floor of the team and just a great, like, team cover. So I think Canon 6, right around 600, there were a few in the 9.8 that had sold. That's got explosion potential. I could see that one over a thousand if Ren just, you know, comes out on Ahsoka just looking awesome. And I have a feeling that that, that likely will happen. Okay, a few ideas here for some key issues in the 9.8 that uh, have that explosion potential. All right, team, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. If you're liking my content, please subscribe and hit that bell, and I'll keep you updated on future videos.